It's another Saturday afternoon of basketball here on the ACC Network. Today in Little John Coliseum, the Samford Bulldogs from the Southern Conference pay a visit to the Clemson Tigers. Hi friends, along with Kelly Gramlich, Pete Gannity with you, a Tigers team trying for an eighth win in nine ball games this season against the Samford squad that has struggled so far against a tough schedule. Clemson off to a hot start, best start since 13-14. Samford injury issues, picked to finish second in the SoCon, not exactly playing like that team so far. Let's focus in on some of the key players in our ball game today. Samford, a team missing their starting point guard, Kristen Cunningham. We'll go more into that a little bit later on. But Justin Coleman, a transfer from Alabama, is another very good point guard for them. Coleman leads this team in assists. And like you said, Pete transferred from Bama, has played against Clemson before in a Crimson Tide uniform. Now, as for the Tigers, in a game in which the guards will make a big impact. Boy, great play on the perimeter from a lot of guys, especially Marquise Reed and Shelton Mitchell so far. Reed and Mitchell have been as good as advertised. That dynamic duo for Clemson, Marquise Reed, five threes against UNC Asheville, and Shelton Mitchell averaging five assists per game. And so we're ready to go on the fourth all-time meeting between the Tigers and the Bulldogs. Their campus located on the south side of Birmingham, Alabama, near the Mountain Brook section of that city. And you see Elijah Thomas getting ready to jump center against Eric Adams. Tigers lead the all-time series, three games to none. It's been about a decade since their last meeting here in Little John in 07 and 08, and we're underway as Clemson tries to beat a Southern Conference team for the second time this season. Looks like Sanford's coming out in a zone. They've got a couple of guys who aren't starting the game today for disciplinary reasons. As Gabe DeVoe loads up and the Tigers knock down a three to start things out. Gabe DeVoe known somewhat as a zone buster. If he gets going early, it's going to be good news for the Tigers. He's shooting 36% from three so far this season. Essentially in this game today, the Sanford Bulldogs without four guys who would have been in their starting lineup either due to injury or illness or disciplinary reasons. There's Adams, a walk-on in his fifth year in the program, and the early turnover by a Bulldogs team that comes in giving it up just under 14 times a game. There's their head coach, Scott Padgett. If you're a basketball fan for a while, you've heard of him. He was a great player in Kentucky on a couple of national championship teams in the late 90s. And now in his first head coaching job, his fourth season guiding this Bulldog program. Former first-round NBA draft pick back in the day in 1999. Solid NBA career. Mitchell for DeVoe this time for the right wing. And the battle for the rebound. It'll go the other way. A little bit of a heat check for Gabe DeVoe. We saw in the North Carolina A&T game, which I called with you, uh, Pete, he hit a few threes early and really got Clemson going against that zone. Brad Brownell going for his 132nd win at the helm of the Tigers, and he's approaching 300 in his coaching career. Just five shy of that number as the day begins. As you said, Kelly Coleman with the ball, played against the Tigers over in the well in Greenville a couple of years ago. He had three points and five assists. Chambers drives inside, and there is Marquise Reed with another steal, his 12th of the season. Wonder how long... Sanford will stay in this zone. DeVoe shot over it early on, but they are not a very deep team because of the variety of reasons we laid out for you. Rebound that time by Stefan Blockage, and we go the other way. Clemson settling for threes early. I think Coach Brown would rather see the Tigers attack the basket a little more against that zone. Scoop and score that time for Coleman. That's what he can do. He's their second leading scorer. It's just over 12 a game. Coleman's a talented point guard for Sanford. He's going to have to play a lot of minutes with Cunningham out, who's kind of the heart and soul of the Sanford team. He's out with an illness. But Coleman seems up for the challenge early. You can see that zone designed as much as anything to deny the post. Elijah Thomas with the ball, and the double team came. Here's Mitchell. Grazes the rim, and let's see. Coleman couldn't corral that one. Out of bounds it goes. And so far, every single shot attempt for Clemson has been a three-pointer. You see this here with Gabe DeVoe. He made that one early, but Tigers one for four. And again, Coach Brown now encouraging the Tigers to attack, because right now the threes are not falling early. Every shot 38% beyond the arc the last time out against UNCA. Of course, their previous game at Ohio State, they were blazing at 53% beyond the arc. They come into the ball game today 37% as a team. Both teams shoot the three really well. Sanford also shooting right at that mark about 36%. So this game might come down to who shoots the ball better from downtown. Here's Coleman scored from that place on the floor moments ago. 
Jokic, native of Bosnia, high off the glass. Maybe a half euro step on his way to the hoop and a quick lead change here as the Bulldogs go up by one. Lockage sized up Elijah Thomas and took him right to the basket. I mean, that play looked like a, a classic a kind of scoop and score from a European player. He's very skilled. I know the coaching staff are excited about him and his development. Leading scorer for the Samford team is not starting this game. Demetrius Denzel Dyson and another forward for them. Alex Thompson is not in the game either. Another long-range jumper missed. Here come the Bulldogs trying to add to their early lead, but that pass a little bit wide of Lockage. And another turnover by the Bulldogs, but well, Stefan Lockage showing you a move. Lockage took Elijah Thomas left side. He scooped that ball way up high. I mean, a little bit of a lofty floater there, knowing that Elijah Thomas has that long wingspan. But good move from Lockage, not shying away from going one-on-one -on -one with Thomas. Tigers coming into this game 14th in the nation in field goal percentage, but a bit of a struggle since that opening Gabe DeVoe jumper. Grantham from the corner. And another miss from the right side by Dante. Looking to push the pace is Coleman. And Gabe DeVoe flies in. DeVoe's done a nice job on the board so far this season. He's averaging 4.1 rebounds a game. DeVoe's really filled up the stat sheet. He's known as a shooter, but he's done a little more than that this year, kind of doing it on all ends. Reed can't get the lid off, and here's Coleman. And again, Clemson settling for threes, and that's one way to break his own is to hit threes, but if you keep missing them, it's going to be a problem for the Tigers. Kevion Nolan, a freshman getting a start today due to attrition, and he drains that tray. He was 30% coming in, and just like that, the Bulldogs, the early four-point advantage. Sanford building confidence as this game goes on when you see the ball go through the net, especially if you're a freshman playing one of your first games against a Power 5 opponent. That confidence will build throughout the game. Contact and the offensive foul will be called against Shelton Mitchell. The first infraction on either team so far in the ball game. Well, Kevion Nolan taking advantage of the opportunity to get a start today. Just a young freshman. He sees an open look, size it up, and puts it down. Sanford off to the early four-point lead on the Tigers, 7-3. to three, But really, their defense has been more of the story so far as we're welcoming it back in, along with Kelly Graham with Pete Yannity with you. And let's face it, Bulldogs have thrown a zone at Clemson. It's not worked out too well on the offensive end for the Tigers so far. They have, and Clemson settled for threes, Pete. I mean, seven threes on eight shot attempts is not how Clemson wants to play. I know the Tigers are better shooting the ball from three this year, but you got to attack the basket and go inside. And one way to remedy that zone is to rebound the ball, especially offensive rebounds. Clemson right now two boards on the game, and Sanford already with six. Tigers have to be better on the boards. Tigers coming into the ball game, out rebounding their opponents by seven a game, and on the offensive glass, they've been very solid. Alex Thompson just checked in. He's usually a starter. He didn't get a start today for disciplinary reasons. And likewise, for Demetrius Denzel Dyson, their top scorer, that's him at the top of the arc. He's a UMass transfer. Thompson, who just tried that shot, came to their program and played for them for the first time last year after beginning his career at Auburn. Little pull-up for DeVoe, who made that three earlier, and there's the rebound. For Alex Peters, who also just checked in, their backup center. And another reason why Sanford's playing that zone, they're really packing it in. They're saying, look, Clemson, if you can beat us from the three, then you can beat us. But because we're undersized, we're going to pack it in and try to make you beat us with your jumper. Chambers. I think he probably got caught in between right there. Might have been better to take the shot. Tigers forced a turnover, looking to score for the first time at about five minutes on the game clock. Nice find by Sims. And Elijah Thomas, his first bucket of the game, and that's what they want to do. They want to feed the post. Exactly right. Got to look inside, and that time it came from a post-to-post -post pass. If the guards aren't going to look out for the post, the post sure will, and that time Amir Sims hit Elijah Thomas for an easy two. So that snaps the Tigers' five-minute scoring drought. Coleman crossover. They look low for the 6'8 Peters, but instead he'll come out and screen. Peters on Thomas, and they'll wave it off on the turnover. And so Tigers, if nothing else, have been getting some stops, and as a result, it remains a two-point game. And here you see Gabe DeVoe's going to help over and force Sanford player there tonight. He wasn't quite sure what to do with that. You're exactly right, Pete. Either take a jumper or pass at Tristan Chambers. A little confused. Good help side defense from Gabe DeVoe, forcing him to make a tough decision. Tigers. We could even this thing up or retake the lead on this trip. Sanford, for all of their substitutions, they essentially traded out 
four for four in that last time out, staying in that zone. A little kick for Reed. And Marquise training the three. 41% down the arc comes into this ball game off 19 against Asheville, in which he was five out of seven on three pointers. And Pete, that's the kind of three you want in a zone. Shelton Mitchell created an open shot for Marquise Reed, attacked the interior of the zone, and then found Reed for an open look. That's the kind of three Brownell wants. Denzel Dyson. Just under 15 a game for him. Little fade away, force a shot. Good D by the vote. Denzel Dyson not starting, like you said, because of disciplinary reasons. It can be kind of hard when you are the leading scorer for the team and you don't start. It might take you a while to get into your rhythm. Ooh, what a nice recovery by Sims, but he can finish. Battle inside. Mark Donnell just checked in. We've got a held ball and the arrow pointing Samford's way. Check out this bucket right here, Pete. Amir Sims finding Elijah Thomas. He had the seal. And Amir Sims hit Thomas right where he had his hand up. And that time, Mitchell attacking the, the middle of the zone and hitting his backcourt mate, Marquise Reed, for a three. Tiger team that, although they've been shooting very well from three-pointers in most games, not among the national leaders in that category, whereas you'll find them among the top 30 or so from the field and also from the foul line. And that free throw percentage over these past few years has been a big story with this constant improvement from year to year. The Tigers have really shot it well. Now 36% from three is pretty good. That's about average. But the way they've shot it from the field and the free throw line is uncommon. And if they keep shooting the ball that way, they're going to win some games in the ACC. Alex Peters will head to the line for the first time as DeVoe picks up his first and his team's second. Les Jones, Raymond Stions, and Burt Smith are crew today. Jones and Smith we're doing the South Carolina State at NC State game in Raleigh last Saturday. When SC State guard Ty Solomon collapsed, you probably heard the story. And no doubt uh, a very scary moment as those gentlemen related. But, uh, they did their best. The EMS personnel obviously uh, responded valiantly. And it turned out to have a happy ending for Ty Solomon. That free throw by Peters. Who Set to the line at just one out of six in the season, but makes them both snaps about a three and a half minute scoring drought for Sanford, and they're back in front. Clemson has struggled a bit offensively early in this game, but you have to credit the Tiger defense. They kept themselves in it because they've held Sanford to only nine points in these first eight minutes or so. Devoe made one from out high. Walker thought he was fouled there from the wing. Reed, no, and inside the Battle for the rebound, and they will get Alex Thompson with his first and Sanford's first time. And again, when you're playing against the zone, offensive rebounding is so important. Mark Donnell, he's going out now as Elijah Thomas will enter the game, but Donnell gave Clemson some good minutes, battling on the boards and finding a way to draw some fouls. See if with Thomas back in, the Tigers try to work a play for him. Sanford really extending that zone. Again, daring Clemson to try to attack it. Kind of like a 3-2 and a 2-3 all at once. Thomas battling on the offensive glass. And quickly, two personals now on Alex Thompson, the 6'8 senior out of Dothan, Alabama. Kind of been back and forth here in the early going in Little John. Sanford, the one-point lead, so it's basketball today for her. Next week, maybe mom and dad will let her go on the computer, go to the NORAD site, start tracking <laughs> Santa's progress. As Scott Padgett and crew hoping to deliver themselves an early Christmas gift. They didn't get into town till 3 a.m. They left Birmingham, where they had snow over there as well on Friday, started their trek, ran into some weather-related traffic in West Georgia. They were crawling along, only going about 40 miles an hour. They were actually stopped still for a while on I-20 west of Atlanta. So then they get on the other side of Atlanta, still crawling along. Then things open up as DeVoe tries for another three, and nothing doing there. And anyway, so they get on the other side of Atlanta. They can start now kicking it into gear, going a little faster. The bus driver hits the pedal, and something was wrong with the engine. They couldn't go above 40 miles an hour, so they pull over along I-85 on the, the Clemson side of Atlanta. Wait at a gas station three and a half hours for another oh bus. Oh, my gosh. So they got in 12 hours before tip-off. That's when heads went on the pillow. There's Lockage with the steal. Unforced error by the Tigers. Here is Nolan. A little pull-up to add that to his early three. And it's back out to a three-point Stanford lead. you got to credit these student-athletes. They have finals next week. They get in at 3 a.m. And they're ready to play a basketball game. It, it, there's a lot of benefits to being a student-athlete, but sometimes the travel 
and, and the trials that go with that go unnoticed. By Trapp feeding Thomas that little baby hook that he's shown to be so skilled at in the early stages of the season. Tiger's back within one. He has great touch on that shot, Pete. And really good touch for a big man. And with that wingspan, the baby hook is very difficult to defend. Thompson picking up that second quick personal for Sanford, so we won't see him back in there for the second half, and as a result, he'll have to adjust. Here is Sharkey, a quick sophomore guard, and he does a nice job to draw the foul against DeVoe for a moment. I thought our official, Bert Smith, was going to say that was actually started by the offensive player. That's right. I think right there you see on the floor, that's a good move by Sharkey to create contact and initiate that play. And Josh Sharkey, a tough point guard, one of the few players out of the Northeast on the Sanford team, all freshman SoCon uh, last year. He, he provided them some spunk and some toughness up there. Follow the bouncing ball, and eventually Marquise Reed will call the foul. And Lockage picking up his first. So DeVoe just picked up his second for the Tigers, and as a result, he will still remain on the floor. I take that back. That was Gabe DeVoe's first. I thought they called him for one earlier. We'll see some of Clyde Trapp in Gabe DeVoe's place. Trapp coming off a really good game against UNC Asheville. Had seven points. His career high so far in his freshman season. Reed in the corner. Now Trapp's going to fire with under 10 on the shot clock. Look at DeVoe inside. Oh, and from behind. Nolan went for the block. They'll get him for the personal foul. And for Kevion Nolan, his first, and the Bulldogs, their fourth. We've mentioned how Gabe DeVoe has really filled the stat sheet this year, done much more than shooting in that time. Right place, right time. He knew where the ball was coming off the miss. I think he would have preferred to have that three-point play, but he's headed to the free throw line now. DeVoe's been to the line just nine times this season, but has not missed until we talked about it. And there's his first miss of the campaign. The old announcer's jinx. <laughs> we had a reverse announcer's jinx in the game here on uh, Sunday against Asheville. We actually were talking about how someone's been so cold from long range, and uh, then they, they made a three. It always seems to go opposite of how we say it, Pete. That's just how it works. That is the, uh, the tendency. The laws of basketball say such. Tie game at 11 apiece. Sharkey, one of four guys on their roster that can play the point and play it well. And let's see, they're going to get the clear out foul on Denzel Dyson. That'll be his first. They're missing Kristen Cunningham today, and at times you'll see that in the flow of their offense. As that time Dante Grantham doing a good job defending. Cunningham is missing his first start as a collegiate. He had started every game from the time he walked on the Samford campus as a freshman. He's now a senior, but we're told he's out today with a health issue. Uh, they hope he can recover from soon enough, so they're missing their starting point guard. Their starting center, Wyatt Walker, played the first two games of the year. They probably rushed back from some offseason knee surgery, and now he's been out for an extended period of time. We won't see him today. Cunningham and Walker two key players for Sanford. To not have Cunningham, a guy that is really the heart and soul of this Bulldog team, is a big blow. We hope he gets back soon for Sanford. Thomas off the glass offensively, and he's fouled inside. That was on 13, Eric Adams. Eric Adams, his first. Elijah Thomas heads to the line, and again, how do you negate the zone when you're not hitting shots? Offensive rebounds, and that's what Elijah Thomas has provided so far for Clemson. One player you saw in that scuffle down there, Dante Grantham. We haven't seen much from him today. He's attempted two shots, has not recorded a rebound or an assist. Um, I was only played about eight minutes, so I think Clemson would like to see Dante Grantham get going as well. Here we go, Elijah Thomas, 48% from the line. Coming into the game today, 71%. He's improved from the line, and his shot does not look like someone who, who should shoot 48%. And he, like you said, he's up to 71%. He's a great stroke for a big man. And he has such good touch inside with that jump hook. You'd think his free throws would, would be a little better, and he has improved this season. It's hard to determine which the bigger story of the first month and a half of the season is. His uh, improvement or the emergence of Dante Grantham as that consistent double-figure scorer and true team leader, which Grantham says he 
was dialed in on from the echo of the final buzzer of uh, last year's final game in the NIT. Both of those guys need to continue that for this team to surprise some folks in the ACC. To me, it's been Dante Grantham. To me, he's been so impressive this year, taking on that leadership role, doing it all, and playing unselfish, distributing basketball. And the steal by Reed will stay in the Clemson end. And that's why it's not alarming that Dante Grantham hasn't scored yet. It's just odd that he hasn't really done much else in terms of assists or rebounds and that kind of thing. And here, Marquise Reed trying to force the issue a bit. Maybe a foul call, but... The officials did not see one in that transition play. Scott Spencer with the ball, just checked in. And down low, another inside foul. And that's, that's really going to be the key for the Tigers. As they have shown so many times against some of these mid-major teams this year. Just feed it inside, and that's how you'll kind of build that working margin. You see, when you've got Tristan Chambers at 6-2, it's little or no match for someone like Elijah Thomas. Very few mid-major teams that are going to come into Little John have an answer for Elijah Thomas. Feed the big man inside, as well as Amir Sims when he's in the ball game, and let them go to work because they just cannot keep up with Thomas's size and his athleticism. And that's where Sanford missing someone like Wyatt Walker today is so important for them, and the fact that Thompson, who's six eight, came in, didn't start today, and then picked up those two quick fouls, so we won't see him likely until the second half. It might be just a pure depth issue for Sanford. Yes, you're losing some of your best players in Wyatt Walker and Cunningham, but you're also losing bodies when it comes to foul trouble. Sanford has to be careful as they are missing a few guys to injuries and other concerns. Thomas now two out of four on free throws. Tigers with the two-point advantage. We've gone back and forth. A handful of lead changes so far. Sharkey, probably the quickest guy on the court, and he'll head to the free throw line. It's an impressive move from Sharkey. A hesitation in and out dribble. And A.J. Oliver, who just came in the game, maybe a little cold, not quite ready to defend. And Sharkey made him pay right there, going to the free throw line. Josh Sharkey out of Archbishop Carroll in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is such a great basketball town. So many great players have come out of there. And Sharkey, a really good get for a school in the SoCon down in Birmingham, Alabama. And among the things he does well is free throws. Came in at 85%. And he makes two out of two to tie this thing up. He plays like a Northeast point guard. He's hard-nosed. He's tough. Maybe he wears that number three for Allen Iverson. Not quite sure, but I have a hunch. That's an excellent uh, excellent point. As a Philly native, you know. There you go. I don't know if Sanford has used any man-to-man -man so far. That's how you beat his own. And Dante Grantham with an exclamation point. The Tigers back in front by a couple. Shelton Mitchell, what a beautiful pass there from Shelton Mitchell. A little razzle-dazzle, no look. And that's exactly how you beat his own, Pete, with the pass. Beautiful pass from Mitchell. Mitchell, five assists a game coming in. Bulldogs try to answer. Coleman lost the handle. And there's A.J. Oliver with the steal. Tigers working the perimeter. Oliver now Mitchell. And the fouls adding up for the Bulldogs. That'll be their eighth as a team. And here a beautiful pass from Shelton Mitchell. Dante Grantham flushes it home. Clemson up two. Tiger men lead by a couple. You see a couple of uh, head coaches for other sports visiting right there. You may recognize the guy on the right, and the woman on the left is Audra Smith, the women's coach, who is here watching her son, A.J. Oliver, play. And her husband and one of her assistants uh, is the dad, of obviously, of A.J., so they're here watching the game. And Otter's team's been red hot, as hot as Dabo's team has been lately. That's right, Lady Tigers, 8-2 and two to start the year, and I guess it's a little bit of a head coach's convention today in Little John as Coach Smith and Dabo Sweeney are hanging out, talking a little basketball. Good to see Coach Sweeney here, and Coach Smith obviously here supporting her son, A.J. Oliver, just a freshman on this team, playing well so far. Well, it has not been a great free-throw shooting effort so far for a very good free-throw shooting team. And Shelton Mitchell, who came in at 83%, 
Gives the Tigers a three-point lead that matches their largest. Sanford's been up by as many as four. Coleman feeding underneath Peter. Wasn't a great pass, but Alex Peters, the senior out of Mountain Brook, Alabama, makes it a one-point game. Wasn't a great pass, but it's a great find from Coleman. Set up Peters perfectly for the easy two. This has been a low-scoring game so far as Spencer loads up from long range and stay the Tigers' way. But the last time Coleman saw the Tigers two years ago was a 51-50 Alabama win when he was with the Tide over in the well. And Elijah Thomas now starting to heat up inside. And that bucket made possible because of Clemson's offensive rebounding, getting second chance opportunities off of missed threes. From the elbow. Can't get the friendly roll. I think they're going to get Thomas on the bump. Alex Peters doesn't do a whole lot of scoring, just three points a game, but a good effort right there to recover. When your point guard draws two defenders and sets you up for an easy two, that's going to go in every time. Great, great pass there from Coleman, and then right here you see Dante Grantham going back inside to Elijah Thomas. Again, Sanford, no answer so far to Elijah Thomas. Clemson's going to need to keep feeding him. Five team fouls in the Tigers, as you see. Sanford. Couple of ways, put the Tigers in the double bonus. A scoop that time right of the hoop by Sharkey. Nothing doing. That was a great attack from Sharkey, but again, his size kind of hurts him inside, and that time he couldn't finish. Donnell gets hung up. His bodies were flying. They will get Sharkey on the personal. That was going to jump Sharkey. That's his first. And the first on him, now nine on the Bulldogs. Pete, you referenced how this game was a little low scoring. And for Clemson, the issue has been shooting the ball. They're only shooting 28.6% from the floor. But Sanford's shooting 45% from the floor. The issue for the Bulldogs, nine turnovers. They're just not getting many good looks because they can't take care of the basketball. You know, it's pretty cold outside with the winter weather we've been having. And for some reason, that is translated to the Tigers' free throw shooting so far. It's Mark Donnell just missed for the second time in seven attempts this year. He's now five out of eight in the season. But look at the great hustle by A.J. Oliver. He's hung up there with his fellow freshman Nolan in the arrow. Points Clemson's way. Big rebound from A.J. Oliver, making his presence known, rebounding inside. And like you said, Pete, very odd to see a Clemson team four of ten from the free throw line. I don't know if someone left the door open That's or what, what, what's going on, but wow. Tigers coming into the ball game at 77% on free throws. And really just not shooting the ball well at all from the field. Like we said, Clemson under 30%. So I think you're right with this leaving the door open, yeah. Terry. And Brad Brownell had to know that an undersized team would play some zone. I don't know if he expected to see it this much, but there's one drilled on the right wing. And A.J. Oliver knocking down the tray. He is now 3 out of 9 on the season. Good to see A.J. Oliver get one to go. He comes in. Known as a shooter, hadn't really, or kind of struggled early as a freshman, but always good to see one go down for the rookie. Six-point advantage, largest lead of the game for the Tigers. Coleman tries to answer, and he does. Boy, a rainbow shot for Justin Coleman. Clemson has attempted 15 three-pointers so far in this wow. game. That's absolutely unheard of, especially for a Coach Brownell team. But 15 threes so far. Again, kind of a lid on the basket from downtown for the Tigers. Why not, says Oliver again. Mitchell off the long rebound. A little step through, and Shelton Mitchell, a nice finish at the rack. And the Tigers back up by five. Sometimes the best offense is to get that offensive board because a defense is not ready. You grab that offensive board, and you can attack the basket right away. Shelton Mitchell saw the opening and did just that. Angel Dyson quiet so far since he came in. Another try by Coleman. And there's Oliver on the rebound. You like what some of these freshmen are showing. Their numbers may not reflect it, but by trap and A.J. Oliver, Amir Sims, here's one of the seniors on the team. And Denzel Dyson pulls down the rebound. Forcing the action and Donnell from behind. You know, the preseason, Brad Brownell said that Mark Donnell's never be confused with a great shot blocker, but that time he showed some enforcement to get his second of the year. And there you see A.J. Oliver's three go down from, from downtown to kind of bust the zone there. Coleman counters with a three of his own. Two young guards knocking down threes early in this game, and Mark Donnell just had the big block in transition, kind of came out of nowhere. Sanford player didn't realize he was on his back, and Donnell swatted that ball into the stands. 
Coleman feeding Adams, who throws it home. That's the second feed that Coleman's had where he's drawn two defenders and enabled his post player to get an easy two. Coleman's been very good for Sanford so far. Sanford back within three. This Bulldogs team, despite their two and seven start, nearly won at Memphis the other night, a game that they'll tell you they should have won. They're up by four in the final 20 seconds. And Shelton Mitchell drains the tray. But they are picked second in the Southern Conference. And again, once they get healthy, they'll be a tough out every night. And Adams heading to the bucket is fouled inside by Donnell. And Mark Donnell gets the foul, but he has also shown some D. He gets the foul, but there he gets the swat. Stands over the Sanford player, says, not in my house, not in Little John today. And there's the beautiful feed from Coleman, and Sanford dunks it. With Kelly Gramlich, Pete Gannity with you back in Little John. Tigers matching their biggest lead of the ball game at six points. A couple of Clemson women's soccer players right there watching the action that has included this. And here's the foul that the that the officials called on Mark Donnell. Mark Donnell looking a little puzzled. He thought he had his hands straight up, but that time Eric Adams did a great job of initiating contact, and he's rewarded with a trip to the free throw line. Eric Adams, a walk-on to this Sanford program, along with another guy who gets a lot of action in the post, Alex Peters. And Adams, very athletic though, 6'7", about 215, and had to deal with some injury issues last year. And they're both trying to fill those big shoes left by Wyatt Walker, who is a preseason all-SOCON pick, who's been out with that injury. One out of two makes it a five-point game, and that was the first miss of the afternoon from the line for the Bulldog team. You notice a lot of skip passes, and uh, well, that time a bad entry pass by the Tigers against this zone. In transition, Nolan hit a three earlier, and now he's two out of two beyond the arc. And just like that, the Bulldogs back within a couple. That's just good transition basketball right there. Pushing the ball up the floor. Shooters are running to their spots beyond the arc, and that time uh, Nolan knocks it down. Mitchell with a look from long range. Look at Grantham battling inside. There's Dante, came into the ball game with six and a half rebounds a contest. Not far off of Thomas's team leading number. Reed tries another three. And inside, let's see. I think they're going to get Adams for the push. Scott Padgett, the head coach. Uh, Samford obviously thought uh, it should have gone the other way. You see the three-point attempt from Reed in that time. Elijah Thomas selling that a little bit, I would say. But he gets the call and he heads to the free throw line. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Clemson right now has attempted 23 so far, Pete. 20 of their 28 wow. shot attempts have been three-pointers. I don't think we've ever seen a Brad Brunel coach team attempt that many threes in the first half. Thomas hits the free throw. Is Stefan Lockett who picked up his second foul. I thought they called it on Adams inside. Grantham with 2.59 to go before the break. Probably won't see him until the second half. Meanwhile, Elijah Thomas, a solid first half. He makes this free throw. He'll be the first player in the game in double figures, and he is with 10 points. Brad Brownell with a timeout to burn. He goes ahead and uses his first. So Brad Brownell and crew, this game today, it's against a, another very good mid-major team, but it's important because the Tigers are off until next Saturday for finals till you play Florida. So you want to do a lot of good things. You don't want to shoot 23s and be well below 40% as they are right now, but if that's the case, you can also rely on the big fella inside. Elijah Thomas has been the bright spot for Clemson this first half, without a doubt. He's been pretty much the only inside presence for Clemson. And right there, you see him with the beautiful baby hook, as we, he's been come to, to know to do. Elijah Thomas coming into the ball game off that nine-point effort the other night against UNC Asheville, but he has been so effective down low. The 15 blocks coming into the game, a big part of the story. The rebounds at eight and a half per ball game, and he's given him a dozen a night. And it's safe to say that he needs to continue that, and Grantham needs to stay around 15 a ball game as the ACC campaign unfolds. Those two need to be double-figure scorers, and then you take the the three primary guards and what they can contribute. You got a balanced attack and count that one for Demetrius Denzel Dyson. He'll try to make it a three-point play. 
Denzel Dyson came into this game, Sanford's leading scorer. We haven't seen much from him today. And again, he didn't get that start. And I think when you don't start, it can really kind of change how you play in terms of getting into the flow of the game. But that time, a really good attack. He gets the roll and draws the contact. Right for Scott Patrick's friend Derek Kellogg at UMass before transferring and beginning his Sanford career last year. And he knocks down the free throw for the three-point play. He didn't get the start, and he hadn't scored until that, and just like that, a one-point game. And just like that, Sanford now outscoring Clemson in the paint, something that I didn't really think was possible when you look at Clemson's size advantage. But that's what the zone has done for Sanford, and they've done a really good job of blocking off that paint and making Clemson shoot threes. Three throws have been a story. Tigers would have a more significant end, obviously. They performed up to their usual numbers so far today. Bulldogs, by the way, a team that comes in at 71% from the foul line. That could be a story as the game unfolds. Mitchell for Grantham and another jam. This one a little bit more gentle from when he made one from that same spot a little bit ago. Great pass from Mitchell, but really good job by Dante Grantham to stay available as Mitchell drove and find a spot where Mitchell could find him under the basket. But Coleman showing you some quicks. Coleman, three points, five assists against the Tigers a couple of years ago. Sanford wanted that to be a goaltend call. Here comes Clemson looking to build on the three-point advantage. Little floater, Shelton Mitchell, and he gets the hometown roll on that. Clemson's first fast break points of the game. They haven't gotten out in transition that much. It's been kind of a, a set offense game, but that time Clemson gets out and runs. First timeout used by Sanford, so each team with three timeouts remaining here with a buck 43 to go before the break. Shelton Mitchell, beautiful bounce pass to Dante Grantham. And again, Grantham kind of in that short corner area, finding a way to stay available for Mitchell. Mitchell was in some trouble, but Grantham bailed him out and got an easy flush. And here's the big block from Elijah Thomas. Coleman's attacking, but Coleman's also given up about a foot <laughs> to Elijah Thomas. And so he got the first step on Thomas, but Thomas was there with that wingspan to block it off the backboard. And that led to offense for Clemson. Defense leading to offense. Tigers getting their first transition points of the game. Tante Grantham just two field goals in the game, both dunks from just left of the basket. Grantham needs to be a little more aggressive, I think, in the second half for Clemson to pull away in this one. He's reverted back a little bit to his junior self, where sometimes he disappeared in games. He needs to be aggressive. He needs to take shots and make sure he's always looking to score for these Tigers. Sharky, the sophomore out of Philly. Oh, from the corner, Denzel Dyson with no guilt. Shot. I'll tell you what, in their league, you will see him double teamed on the wing, fading away into their bench, and he'll fire threes. He is about as good of a shooter in distress as you will see at the mid-major level. Mitchell inside and Peters holding ground and Bulldogs will get it back with a chance to tie or retake the lead. Peters is one that is going to get easy buckets, he's going to get dumped down, but great job. Set the screen there and drawing the charge, but look at this shot from Denzel Dyson. I mean, double teamed in the corner, the very edge of the corner, and he knocks it down. And here you see the charge. We talked about Peters earlier. He knows his role. He's there to grab rebounds, make layups, and do the little things. Great job getting outside the semicircle there and taking the charge. They emphasize in his bio he's known for his hustle and his energy. And that time, he was thinking about a dunk, but a great job defensively by Marquise Reed and then Eli Thomas. Good job by Oliver to slow up there. The, the Clemson didn't have numbers. No need to force it. Time to run some offense. And Grantham that time, and that'll be another charge called against the Tigers. This time on Dante, and for Dante Grantham, he picks up his first personal. Smart play by Justin Coleman. He was excited about that charge. You can see his celebration, but he set his feet, just got run over by the much bigger player, sold it a little bit, and drew the charge. Scott Padgett told me before the game that he was going to see if his team could be a team today with all their issues they've had going on what they could do and they've had some flow issues offensively that time just an unforced error by Starkey but I think so far over these first 20 minutes he'd be pretty proud of what he's seen. Sanford's come to play you can't doubt their effort or their energy and they've made some big shots the one thing for Sanford is those now 11 turnovers they had 10 before that pass they kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit in this first half. Yeah they come in averaging just under 14 a game so we're on the way to a 
Bad day in that category, and boy, they will get a reach in on Nolan, the freshman. He now has two. Double bonus opportunity for Marquise Reed. And that's a, that's a foul from Kevion Nolan, but I know Sanford would like that. You put Marquise Reed on the free throw line, a very, very good free throw shooter for Clemson. There's no need for that foul. You give them basically a chance to get a few free points before the half. Just not a good foul from the freshman there, and there you see Coach, Coach Padgett talking it over with Nolan. Reed, 83% from the line this year. And he hits his first attempt of the day. He's just one out of six beyond the arc. Two out of two for Marquise. Had the chance to get in the high 80s before the year is done. We'll see it, 90% last year. Marquise Reed was right around 90% on free throws, and Shelton Mitchell wasn't too far behind. He was one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC. Yeah, absolutely. Nick Mitchell finished 84% last year. So, final possession time. Coming up on five to play, way downtown, Denzel Dyson, no, and on the rebound, we'll get a foul, and they'll get Peters, I believe, coming over the back of Reed, and that's the kind of thing when you're a mid-major trying to hang in, and you see there in the background, Scott Padgett, now you're going to put a Clemson free throw shooter at the line to add to a four-point lead with 3.1 to go. I know that's frustrating for Padgett and his coaching staff to put Clemson on the free throw line twice in these final 30 seconds. I mean, just kind of give Clemson three points in a half in which you played really well if you're Sanford. And you'd think that you should not be down by four or five or six, but that's what it's going to end up being because of these free throws. And the Tigers now. Eight out of 15 from the line. And again, that is just that is just odd for Clemson. I think that's going to be a point of emphasis for Coach Brownell in the locker room. Again, the Tigers shooting a little better from the floor, now up to about 37%. But 23-point attempts, only four makes. And then, like we said, shooting under 60% from the line. One out of two, Thomas. Kind of showing pressure. Coleman to beat the buzzer. Would have counted had it gone. That's how we arrive at halftime here in Little John. We went back and forth lead change wise during the opening half four times and the Tigers head to the break with a five point advantage. Clemson 6-0 this year when leading at the half. Samford is 0-5 when trailing. Tigers and the Samford Bulldogs of the SOCON. Clemson trying to go 2-0 against teams from that conference this year after their opening win against Western Carolina. We're back with halftime after this. Tigers lead by five. We get ready for the second half. A first half in which Sanford hung around, led on several occasions for lead changes. They've got some quick guards. Coleman was the catalyst for Sanford for most of that first half. You see him distributing. You see him attacking. And there was Nolan with a big three. You had Peters who went to work inside. Got some good dishes from Coleman. There's another Coleman pass to Adams. Coleman again, the catalyst for Sanford. Clemson has to slow him down in this second half to ensure a Tiger victory. And you worry if you can't get hot from three and if guys like Denzel Dyson can hit them like that, Samford is a good team from outside coming in 36% on three-pointers. They might even be a little bit better by the end of the season with that number. Tigers came out of the gate uh, hitting that three, but then uh, some irony ensued, even though Shelton Mitchell drained one. That's been the big story so far in the game. There were two of Clemson's four made threes, but Elijah Thomas was all of Clemson's offense pretty much in that first half. He got it going inside, offensive rebounds. He played some good defense, got a block there. Clemson found him inside, different feeds from Shelton Mitchell and, and Marquise Reed. And Dante Grantham, a few dunks early. We'll see if Dante Grantham can get more involved for Clemson. I think that would bode well for the Tigers down the stretch. Now you noted Elijah Thomas. He was the offense, the only double-figure scorer for either side with 11 points. And now Eli continued to do good work on the boards, five rebounds. Scott Padgett trying to spring an upset. His ball club played a great first half against Memphis the other night. Had a double-figure lead into the second half. They were up by four points in the final 20 seconds, and somehow Memphis came back and got him a heartbreaker, 65-64. This is a team that their opponents coming into this ball game with a record, just an obscene record, like 50-10, and 10, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, they have faced some tough folks. Battle inside, and that time they got a little... Confused down low on a quick turnover. Sanford's played some good teams so far in this early non-conference. 
and they've played three road games in the last seven days. This is their third. Like you said earlier, Pete, they got into Clemson at 3 a.m. They have really had the gauntlet this past week. They're getting ready for finals, I'm sure. So a tough stretch for the Bulldogs. Stay with that zone, which again, they need to do because they're overmatched athletically as they get the illegal screen called. Elijah Thomas picking up a second. They have injury and illness issues. They're not a very deep team as a result, so they're staying in the zone also to preserve their legs when you factor in all the travel they've been doing. But it's probably the way to go. It's, it's almost like when you see an overmatched football battle, but one team runs the option and keeps the clock running. It's almost that same principle. Well, and you're betting that Clemson's not going to shoot the ball well. If you play the zone, that's kind of what you're, you're risking. If Clemson shoots the ball well from three, then you're kind of out of luck. But Clemson, like we said, is only four of 20. So Sanford's able to hang around that way. Eric Adams doing his best. Elijah Thomas impersonation right there. And first bucket of the second half. And a third foul in the ball game against the Bulldogs, Stephon Lockett. And as you saw, Adams, that's the kind of thing they're going to need to get out of him because Tigers can extend out and eventually quiet any three-point opportunities or at least make it more difficult. Adams has given Sanford some solid minutes today. He averages less than five points per game. But he's been good for the Bulldogs today, already at his average scoring. I'm not smart enough to figure it out. 2-3 zone? Well, what I think it is, is technically it's a 2-3, but because they expand it up so much, it looks more kind of like a 1-2-2. Two, two. But I think the, the idea of the zones or the areas that each guy in the zone has are very similar. But I guess I, I think I might call that a 1-2-2. Two, two. Whereas a 1-3-1, one, one, the boiler played on going attacking that is trying to get open guys in the corners. We can only wonder if maybe that's the best place where the Tigers might have the open look. Exactly. That's why Sanford's zone has been good so far because you're kind of confused as to what kind of zone they're playing. Right now, they're definitely in a 2-3. And so you want, if they have an even front up top and two, you want one guy up top. And that time you see with Reed channeling the point guard right there. Notice how Grantham first looked for Thomas. Elijah can reel it in. It'll go the other way. By the way, as you see, two fouls early on here in the second half against the Bulldogs. Dante Grantham did what he was supposed to. He was at the free throw line, got the ball, and was supposed to go with the, the one-in pass uh, in that look. But a good job to collapse by the Bulldogs with a chance to get a little bit closer. Tigers led by as many as six, but an offensive foul, and that's on Adams. And they are starting to mount up here in the second half for Sanford. We talked about this with Sanford. With all the bodies they have to injury, you can't afford to get, especially your big guys in foul trouble. They are pretty deep at the guard spot, but they are not deep inside. And that's one thing Sanford has to be careful with in this second half. You can tell at halftime, Scott Patrick told his crew, do whatever you can to deny entry passes into Elijah Thomas. Mitchell from the corner, no, there's Coleman. Well, Coleman and Starkey, two of the quickest guards the Tigers have seen on the same team this year. What a nice idea that was by Denzel Dyson, but even better defense by the Tigers. He had one too many ideas there, Pete. Maybe just <laughs> take the jumper after your first pump fake Ooh, and don't pump fake again. Denzel Dyson defensively coming away with the steal. He's among their leaders. He had nine coming into the game. And that time they had a shooter open in the corner in Chambers, but another turnover by Sanford. Well, more hustle by the Tigers, particularly senior Gabe DeVoe. He went for the pump fake, but got back in the play. Great recovery from Gabe DeVoe. Got the deflection, and it led to transition for Clemson. Like Marquise Reed, DeVoe and double-figure steals when the afternoon began. Well, Mitchell can't be more wide open than that. He'll be the first to tell you he's got to hit that jumper. What a great find that time. When you move the ball well, which Clemson did right there, you're going to get some open looks. And I know Mitchell would like to have that one back. Again, kind of been a lid on the basket for Clemson defensively. But Mitchell shoots the ball so well from three that you'd think they will fall eventually. The start of the second half, very much like the first one. Neither team was doing a whole lot offensively. Force inside, Adams battling in the late whistle. And they'll get the foul against Clemson. Marquise Reed picking up the personal, and that will be his first. 
Kind of a ticky-tack foul there. Adams battling inside with Elijah Thomas, and Reed stuck his hand in, got, got a foul there. Not the best foul from Reed, but he's not in foul trouble, so Brownell's not going to be too worried about that one. But just kind of an unnecessary ticky-tack foul there. Bulldogs facing their third Power 5 team on the road this year. They've been to Arkansas and LSU. That was nearly an over and back, but the ball did not cross the line, and that's why Russ Jones didn't call at the top of the screen. Keep in mind, they've also played at Loyola, and you may know that the Chicago team went down to Florida and won. Ooh, nice drive by Coleman to Just bring his team within a point, and they played Valparaiso on the road. That's always a tough place to go play in northern Indiana. And then, of course, they almost beat Memphis, which isn't all that great this year, but they played in some tough places. And again, an infraction against the Tigers. This time it's an illegal screen called on Donnell. Here's Coleman on the attack. I've been very impressed with Coleman so far in this matchup, Pete. He's quick. He's crafty. He makes the right play in terms of when to shoot it, when to pass it inside. And like you said earlier, Sanford's played on the road at a lot of Power Fives so far this season. They're not going to be blinded by the big lights of the moment. They're used to playing in these big arenas against these big teams. And they're really hanging with Clemson so far. Coleman. Kick it to Denzel Dyson. The Sanford Bulldogs out of the halftime locker room. A 7-0 run. It's our fifth lead change of the ball game in first of the second half. And they're back in front by two. Textbook ball movement that led to a wide open jumper for Denzel Dyson. And he knocks it down. Reed way downtown. No, but he'll go to the line. And the freshman, Kevion Nolan, he looked over to his bench with a look of frustration. Official timeout on the court, but the Bulldogs have come out 7-0 to start the second half. Here's Gabe DeVoe looking for some offense in that time. Nothing going there for Clemson. Right there, Denzel Dyson with the three. Great ball movement from Sanford. And Denzel Dyson for three. What a nice family enjoying the game. You know the guy on the left, Tony Elliott. Congratulations to the Tigers' co-offensive coordinator. Got the Broyles Award earlier in the week. He said he thought they'd made a mistake. He was surprised anybody as a top assistant coach in the year, but one of the many greats on the Clemson staff. And, of course, he and the crew will start fully dialing in with the pre-bowl practice for the semifinal game. So let's take a look at the look as Nolan became the third Bulldog to get three fouls in the game, but he got his money's worth. That's right. He's going to get a free, three free throws out of Reed. And Marquise Reed, if you're going to foul him on a three-point shot, that's pretty much three points because he's so good from the free throw line. So not a good foul from the freshman there for Sanford. And it was a rugged day from the line for the Tiger team to start out picking up three out of three that time. For Reed, and just like that, Clemson back in front. Their first three points of the second half. One way to improve your free throw percentage is to get Marquise Reed to the free throw line. That's one way to get that number up for Clemson. Second lead change here in half number two, six in the game. Denzel Dyson with Amir Sims out there. They put the big body defensively, but Sims can go out there and defend. Five on the shot clock. Denzel Dyson, Chambers. Christian Chambers, that's what he can do. The sophomore out of Cold Springs, Florida, is 41% beyond the arc this season. Another Sanford Bulldog that shoots the ball well from three. They've had three guys that shoot over 34%, and he's one of the guys in that 40% range. Sanford can be deadly from three, and they shot it well so far from today. They're six of nine from beyond the arc. And that time, Sims forced into the turnover. Coleman doesn't have the numbers. Oh, look at the up, under, and then kiss off the glass. And the Bulldogs matching their largest lead of the game. And Brad Brownell has seen enough. He will use his second timeout. And that will leave the Tigers with two the rest of the way. So the Sanford Bulldogs with just under 15 to go in the second half, making things real interesting here in Little John. Tigers down four. They've only turned it over nine times, but Samford making the most of the opportunities. Amir Sims and Eric pass there from the freshman. Coleman attacks. He has a shooter, but he takes it all the way. He hit the shooter um, the, the play before he hit Chambers. A quick 5-0 run for Samford. Tigers trying to cut into a 12-3 Bulldogs run in this half, and that's the way you do it. You attack the basket and a chance at a three-point play. You go back to your bread and butter. You go back to what you know, and that's attacking the basket with your guards. 
Marquise Reed, really good attack here, goes left, finishes strong with the right hand, and going to the free throw line for a three-point play. Reed starting to pick up the offense, and double figures, and 11 points, he and Thomas lead the way. He's, also, the he's picked up the aggressiveness in that he's not attempting threes anymore. He's attacking the basket. He's doing it another way. Clemson's come to realize, look, there, there's kind of a lid on the basket for us from three. You got to attack and find a way to score other ways. Let's also keep in mind a team that didn't get until three in the morning. Sanford and DeVoe knocking down another tray. He started the Tigers scoring and he puts Clemson back in front with another lead change here in the second half. Clemson with a 6-0 run to counter Sanford's 5-0 run. That's how you respond out of a timeout, and that's how you respond when a mid-major comes in and it takes a lead in your building late in the second half. And you wonder if the weariness might start setting in for that late arrival because of the issues they had in their travel from Birmingham. From way downtown, Coleman, man, it almost touches the roof. It, it looks like Coleman. when he lets it go, he's something. Sanford doesn't look tired to me, Pete. They're 7 of 10 from beyond the arch, shooting 70%. That's the story of this game so far. Sanford has made the most of the three. They've utilized it to their advantage. And Clemson hasn't really shot it well, but Gabe DeVoe heating up for the Tigers. DeVoe now 3 out of 6 beyond the arc. Clemson just 4 out of 20 in the opening half from three-point range. But just like that, our 10th lead change. And our six here in the second half. And this half, Clemson's two of four from three. They've taken better threes, and now they're knocking them down. That's Denzel Dyson, Demetrius Denzel Dyson, one of the best outside shooters in the Southern Conference. I'll see your three, and I'll raise you a three. That's what Denzel Dyson said right there. How about Shelton Mitchell from the corner? And Mitchell, he'd been seeing it rattle out, but Shelton Mitchell knocks down the tray. Four straight possessions with a made three. Two from Clemson, two from Sanford. These teams are literally trading baskets right now. Eighth lead change of the second half, 12th in the ball game. Tigers led by as many as six. There's the steal by DeVoe on Sharkey. And he steps back for a three. Probably old advised. Look at Grantham hustling in. Dante gets it back. Great hustle from Dante Grantham, the trail man in that transition. Again, kind of a quick shot from Gabe DeVoe, but Dante Grantham was there to make the most of the putback. Tigers turning a four-point deficit just moments ago into a four-point lead. And Chambers almost picked up the ball there. He'll drive inside. There's Denzel Dyson. Coleman. Not that time, and out of bounds. Last touch by Demetrius Denzel Dyson. And we arrive at an official timeout. Well, the Sanford Bulldogs trying to hang around. This three from Coleman is a beauty. High arcing, you look at the spin on that ball, nothing but net. Tigers back up by 4, 52 to 48. My, how things can change on the three. The three-point shot has been the story of the second half for both teams. Right here you see Clemson with a flurry of threes so far. Gabe DeVoe, two back-to-back -back threes. And then Shelton Mitchell, the lefty from the corner, knocking it down. Sanford has hit a lot of threes in the second half. So has Clemson. Both teams have shot it well. Sanford four of five from three in this half. And Clemson three of six, shooting the ball a lot better from downtown in this half rather than the first. You see each team is... Done some pretty good work from the field in the second half. Gabe DeVoe doing some fine work from downtown. DeVoe yet another three, his third of the half. And he's a 50% in the game. Gabe DeVoe embracing the mantra, shooters shoot. He struggled a bit in the first half, but he has come out swinging in the second half, and I like his aggressiveness. Sharky. All the way around the world that time. Comes in. Biggest lead of the game at seven. Little scoop, boy. He and Coleman, his teammate, have that down to a science. So the Tigers' largest lead of the game, short-lived, and matching the margin we had at the break when the Tigers led 35-30. And away from the ball, Thomas hits the deck, and they will get Alex Peters with the bump. That is. 
his third. So they have, what, four players who have three fouls apiece. They've had foul trouble, and now they're having to play Coleman and Sharkey together. Two talented guards, but both so undersized. I think that zone with Coleman and Sharkey both at the top is easier for Clemson to enter their offense and get going because you have two guys that are both about 5'10 or less at the top of the zone. Hesitation by DeVoe, and they'll get Grantham coming over the back. Yeah, as you noted, with Dante Grantham picking up his second personal, they list both Josh Sharkey and Justin Coleman at 5'10". I'm assuming they were using a normal <laughs> ruler uh, on that because that may be a little bit uh, of an exaggeration. Here's the foul on Dante Grantham going over the back. Sharky's 5'10". I'm 5'10", Pete. If I go out there and stand next to Sharky, yeah. I promise you I'm taller than him. Yeah. I think so. We'll see. But, yes, definitely generous there. Yeah. That 2-3 zone, it's not as effective when you don't have some size out there with your dogs. Sharky with the ball. You saw Coleman's getting a breather. Nolan, the freshman, one of those with three personal fouls back out there. Big dog saw the Tigers go by seven moments ago, and that time a little too much on the carry by Josh Sharkey, the sophomore out of Philadelphia, and the turnovers continue to build for the Bulldogs team. They have twice as many as the Tigers. That's their 18th. It's a rare call from the officials to call palming or call carrying the ball, but that time, before he even called it, I thought in my head, he's carrying the ball. I wonder if the officials will have the guts to do it, and they did. That's the right call. Live trap back in there. He just had the ball. Keeping an eye on DeVoe, they really have to stay in that zone and hope they can extend it for the shooters and not let guys like Reed get that wide open. One of the few good looks the Tigers haven't converted on here in the half. That was a really good ball movement. He got an open look for Reed. He was just short on that one. And traveling the call for yet another turnover by the Bulldogs. The way Sanford's shooting the ball, they're 58% from the floor, 67% from three. 86% from the free throw line. You think they should be winning the basketball game, but it's those 18, no, now 19 turnovers. That's been the story for Sanford. Bulldogs average just under 14 turnovers a game. The Tigers have forced 13 out of their opponents. How about trap for three? Not that time. There is Thompson who's had a quiet day on the board. Clemson not shying away from the three. Now up to 31 attempts. They've shot it better in the second half, but it appears Coach Brownell is content with Clemson attempting a good amount of threes tonight. Nolan, he's shown an ability to shoot. Not that time, but there's Adams. And another shovel. A score and a foul. As Sharkey blew right by Reed. Sharkey did a great job on this attack of shielding the ball, using his body, really contorting himself to stay away from Eli Thomas because he gives up at least a foot to Eli Thomas. He's been undersized like that his whole life. He's developed that ability to score amongst the trees, and that's an impressive play from Sharkey. Only a sophomore for Sanford. Reed second. Team fouls, you see them. Pretty much in the same neighborhood in the second half. Sharkey two out of two so far from the line. So he was a true freshman last year when Coleman had traveled in from, had transferred in from Alabama and was sitting out. Each of them, we've seen them with that underhanded scoop. You wonder if Coleman taught that to Sharkey or Sharkey, who's from that great basketball town, Philadelphia, maybe uh, taught the older fellow a trip. I'm sure last year when Coleman was sitting out and Sharkey was a freshman playing some scout team, they had some battles in practice down there in Birmingham. In that zone. Kind of flexing. Looks like they brought another man. And well, they uh, had a chance to ring up DeVoe that time, but he gets bailed out on the reach in foul on Sharkey. That'll be his second. I think this is a good call. That time, DeVoe, I mean, after the foul, he did carry it yep. somewhat, but there was a foul before that. Yep. You Absolutely. can't let all that hand checking um, and hand stuff happen out there. And that's probably why he looked like he kind of got right. out of kilter exactly. with his dribble. At least that's what Gabe DeVoe would tell you. Exactly. I think so. And maybe Coach Brownell as well. You know, I was talking to him yesterday. He, in high school at Shelby High in North Carolina, Gabe DeVoe was the class president his first three years, the student body president his senior year as he knocks down the free throw. So I asked him, why is your nickname not the president or the Preds? <laughs> that would be a great nickname. He says it's G. Rob because his first name is actually Robert. And Gabe is his middle name. And I wanted to talk a little bit about Gabe because Saturday when the Tigers play at Florida, he'll also be celebrating a birthday. So a happy birthday wish to Gabe DeVoe. 
one of the few Tigers who has a birthday in the season. So he gets to be around all of his friends on a road trip uh, this time around. Not bad at all. He's got the second one to go, so it stays a three-point game. The vote came in perfect from the free throw line, but that's not been the case this afternoon. The Tigers still have gotten better now, 14 out of 22 for a while. They were way down there percentage-wise. Chambers had a long one earlier, not that time. Apple inside for the rebound. Here come the Tigers. Mitchell. Yeah, he had another good look with Shelton Mitchell. A little bit of a struggle for him. He came in at 32%. So now, once again, Sanford a chance to get a little closer and maybe tie this thing up as well. Under eight and a half to play here in regulation. Mitchell, two of eight from three. That time the defense was shifting. I'd like to see him attack the basket there and try to create inside rather than settling for the three. Amir Sims, the Tiger freshman, says no scoop for you as he knocks that one out of bounds on the block. The Clemson Bigs starting to figure out kind of what Coleman and Sharkey like to do, using their body to shield the ball and scoop it in. But that time Amir Sims, great play, not fouling there. And now here comes Grantham. Off the turnover and spinning to the bucket. That'll be the fourth on Thompson. Good job by Grantham to use his body. The defender cut off his left side, put the spin cycle on him in transition, and gets to go to the free throw line for two. That was on 20. Alex Thompson has his fourth. Les Jones telling us he was in the act of shooting was Dante Grantham, so. As that's the eighth team foul on the Bulldogs. This will be a two-shot opportunity instead of the one and one. things he's doing well this year 71 percent and he and Marquise Reed both closing in at a thousand points Reed began the day at 969 Dante at 955 so perhaps they're also having an internal competition to see who gets there first Marquise Reed brought a good amount of points over from Robert Morris where he transferred from and he's scored a lot in the Clemson uniform as well and he's got another year of eligibility left so to do it in your junior year he's so over pressing. 500 points in his freshman year at Robert Morris. That is rare. Ooh, what a nice idea by Adams. Tigers did a good job responding. It'll pull up by Chambers. And a foul. And I think they're going to get Adams coming over the back of Sims. That'll be the ninth team foul against the Sanford Bulldogs. They are hanging around. The Tigers' lead is five here in Little John. We can confirm if the drummer did or did not show up today, but that's some of what's going on here in Little John Coliseum here in the background. Along with Kelly Gramley, Pete Gannity with you, a five-point lead for the Tigers. I think Gabe DeVoe is a metaphor for how things have gone in this game, scoring-wise, for Clemson. Without a doubt. He did not shoot it well in that first half. That was his only made three of the first half. But the second half, he's really come alive for Clemson, knocking down three threes in this second half of the game. He's kept shooting the ball. I know he missed a few early, but as we said before, shooters keep shooting, and that's what the coaching staff have told him. You see it there, three of five in the second half. He has been an offensive catalyst for Clemson in the second half of play. With that being said, Tigers have gone four minutes without a field goal, although Amir Sims, front end of the one and one, had a chance to add to this five-point lead. Clemson's led by as many as seven earlier in this half, and Sanford matching their best lead of the game at four points as well earlier in the half when they came out of the locker room on a 12-3 run. Coleman that time on the reach in by Clyde Trout. Earlier in this half, it was a three-point barrage, right, Pete? Both from Clemson and Sanford. And here you see the reach in from Clyde Trout. That's going to be a pretty much a hand check foul every time. But now neither both teams have kind of cooled off from beyond the arc. So we'll see if one team can get it going in these final eight minutes and kind of use that again to their advantage. Coleman that time and Sims another rejection. Great job by the freshman. Denying that scoop try first by Sharkey and then by Coleman. Short for Grantham. That's a good look in transition. You had a wide open Dante Grantham. You want him to take that shot with how well he's been shooting it this season. Good catch and shoot try by Denzel Dyson. Switching on defense, the Bulldogs. Ooh, trap, nice find. Grantham, man, he gets the roll. Supposed to be a slam in Tanda. Uh, turns out to be a gentle hoop for Dante Grantham, and will go to the line. What a powerful move from Dante Grantham. 
He went up for the dunk. He got denied in some ways. There was a physical action at the basket, but he found a way to score and power that one home. A great block there from Sims. And then you see this pass from Clyde Trap. Dante Grantham just attacking the defender. And look at that. Powerful move from the senior. Fourth Tiger in double figures. Grantham with 10. DeVoe leading all scorers in the game with 14. And now Dante Grantham. The Tiger players who has 11 points. He's actually the fifth Tiger to get double figures. Four of them have 11 points. And DeVoe with that 14 point effort. Tigers now 17 out of 26 from the line. And 8 of 10 from the line in the second half. Clemson shooting like themselves from the free throw line in the second half. Biggest lead of the game for Clemson. Eight points. Bulldogs. No one unable to change that. Mitchell on the run out. Step through and right around the defender. Denzel Dyson. Tigers have built a double figure lead for the first time this afternoon. At 63 to 53, and Scott Padgett has seen enough. He will go ahead and use his second timeout. Each team has two remaining. That was a great job by Clemson, by Clemson to get the ball out in transition, to look to run, to find Shelton Mitchell near that half court line, and then Shelton Mitchell, the beautiful Euro step, switches to his right hand mid air and finishes. That's impressive. We'll get another look at it. You see that he, stri he strikes across the lane. Switches to his right hand. Remember, a left-handed player hangs in the air and finishes the contact. It's really one of the underrated skills you can develop as a basketball player, becoming comfortable going to the opposite hand. And how many times have you heard, hey, this guy loves to go to his left, and once teams figure that out, they, they shut him down. So that's really an underrated aspect. You see the foul trouble that also besets the Bulldogs right now. You're exactly right, Pete. And not just being able, just, not just being competent with that offhand, but being able to finish in transition and with contact with the offhand. That's so important, especially for a crafty guard like Mitchell, who attacks the basket so much. 8-0 run by the Tigers has built this 10-point lead. Uh, the Bulldogs, though, have done a nice job defensively with that zone. Clemson came in averaging just under 80 points a game, and, well, they could still get around that neighborhood, but they certainly had not been on a pace toward that for most of this contest today. And Samford, a team that is playing much better defensively than they had been. They were giving up about 83 a game. And we told you they played some tough folks, but... And still, I think Scott Patrick would tell you they're playing about as well defensively as they have. And one of the reasons he told me before the game that they don't have a great defensive number, they've been playing pretty good defense, but they've given up so many easy baskets because they've been so out of sync offensively. And they've given away a lot of turnovers that have led to quick buckets and that kind of thing. Stanford's also been, I think they're minus five in the rebounding margin this year, and that has hurt them. They've done well today. They punt with Clemson on the board. That always hurts your scoring defense. Nice play called out of the timeout. And Coleman coming through, and he builds on his afternoon. He now has 14 points, and that's Clemson's DeVoe for game high in scoring. Talk about that foul trouble for Sanford. They're having to go with three guards right now that are all about six foot or shorter. And that makes the zone a lot easier to attack because you just can't apply that much pressure on the wing when all those guards are on the side. Feed Thomas. Elijah can't finish. Battles inside. Rebound taken away by Denzel Dyson. Sharkey inside, try to force the action, can't do that against this Clemson team, the way they play D. Mitchell, a little one-handed force, but the putback inside, a nice job. Down low, Dante Grantham now has 13 of the game. Dante Grantham has a knack for putbacks. He knows where the ball's coming off the rim. He gets himself in the right position, and he's so good at not coming back down with that ball, going back up and finishing in the air when the ball comes off the rim. Good job once again by Gabe DeVoe forcing the issue and another turnover by the Sanford Bulldogs now. 22 in the game. And there's Coleman, another crafty finish. He's been so good today. Finding a way to finish over the Clemson Bigs. He's been impressive. Tigers have a week off ahead. Or Roughly, we'll obviously be doing some practice. The finals week is coming up. Next Saturday at 4.30, they play down in Sunrise, Florida against the Florida Gators. In the Orange Bowl Classic, Shelton Mitchell drains another trade. So in the ball game, after making just four in the opening half, Tigers from beyond the arc, nine out of 34, but they made more in the second half than they did in the first. And the percentage much better as well. Clemson kept shooting. I think that was part of the game plan. 
to shoot the three and try to get offensive boards out of those threes. But Clemson, when you shoot a higher percentage in the second half, good things are going to happen. Coleman can't get that three to go. Good job coming out to defend by the goal. And the ball will stay in the Tigers' end. So the Tigers so far have been getting it done in the second half inside and outside. Shelton Mitchell, a nice pull up there, didn't get the roll, but again, Dante Grantham in the right place, gets the ball as it comes right off the rim. And there's Shelton Mitchell, he was two of eight before this shot, but he shot that ball like he was eight of eight. Shot it with a lot of confidence and gets it to go down. Tigers starting five, all in double figures as we noted. Mitchell now the leading scorer, 16 in the game. DeVoe trying to drain another tray. He has 14. Mitchell following up inside. A foul is called. And Shelton Mitchell bouncing back up after he hit the deck hard. Clemson with now 15 offensive rebounds in this game. That's been a difference maker for the Tigers, especially as they've made their run in the second half. Good hustle from Shelton Mitchell. Finds a way. They didn't box him out. you got to find Shelton Mitchell and box him before he finds a way to come in and grab that board. Now, who is giving instruction to whom in this particular situation? Uh, perhaps uh, the individual that has the orange fur has deep statistical knowledge and the other fellow you just saw in that picture as the Tigers build on their biggest lead of the afternoon and Mitchell having himself a nice game and a nice bounce back game scoring wise. He had just six in here on Sunday against UNCA. But Shelton Mitchell, a couple of free throws and he's getting close to 20 in the game. Mitchell's been aggressive. He's, he's leading the Tigers in scoring right now, but he still also distributes as four assists on the night as well. Step back, Denzel Dyson. Mitchell defending right there. Alley oop lob. Griffin! Marquis Reed got to midcourt. He saw the opportunity and a little bit of added excitement as the Tigers have started to turn this thing into a blowout. What a connection between Marquise Reed and Dante Grantham. A little eye contact goes a long way. Marquise Reed lobs it up perfectly. Dante Grantham with the finish. Peters on Thomas. Instead, it's Chambers from downtown. Reed dumping. Thomas tapping. Reed finishing. And it's a 19 point Clemson lead. Sanford calling a timeout. Tigers now having a little bit of thunder to their game. Another beautiful pass from Mark Reese Reed. Dante Grantham with the flush and the screen. A 19-2 run for the Tigers, 74-55. Back here in Little John Coliseum, and Sanford has had just one field goal over the past nine and a half. Things starting to get even more fun for Dante Grantham and company. It's been all Clemson in these past couple minutes, a 19-2 run, like you said, Pete. And just a beautiful pass from Marquise Reed, perfectly placed for Dante Grantham. And that is going to get the Tigers going and really propel them into these final four minutes. Told you the Tigers with their balance and scoring, and there is evidence of it. Boy, they would love that each and every night. And Alex Thompson will have an opportunity for a couple of free throws to be backed in that time on Marquise Reed. This game has been all about the starters. You see that graphic with those five players. All five of those Tigers are Clemson starters. You haven't had much production off the bench, but you haven't needed it. When all five of your starters go for those kind of numbers and are all in double digits, you're going to get the job done. Alex Thompson, native of Dothan, Alabama, began his career at Auburn. And he came in at 69%. He played his first year in a Bulldogs uniform last year and was a real nice addition. They're as talented as they've been under Scott Padgett. He will tell you that. And they're one of the more talented Sanford teams they've had over the years. This guy is going to be counted on. And his playing styles compared a lot to his head coach when he was at Kentucky, playing for Rick Pitino and Tubby Smith. And Scott Padgett goes about 6'8", six, 6'9", six, but, you know, can look like a guard at times. Thomas wide open, great find by Grantham, and Eli will have a chance for a couple of free throws, so they've got a lot of good pieces. They will be a tough out in the Southern Conference, and there's a lot of very similar teams this year. Not really a great team in that league, but some very above average uh, ball clubs, as evidenced by Wofford beating Georgia Tech the other night in Spartanburg. That's and, right. Especially uh, when Sanford finally gets healthy, when they get a lot of their players back. We assume Walker will be back soon. Obviously Cunningham, who's out with the with the injury or with the illness. Once they get a lot of their guys back, they should be poised for a good run in that SOCON. 
Fifth foul on Peters. As a result, you get the built-in timeout in that situation. And Elijah Thomas. We'll go to the line and shoot a couple. Alex Peters grew up in the shadow of the Sanford campus in Mountain Brook. Beautiful part of the Birmingham area. This day is done. Elijah Thomas would like to add to his 11 points. Most of his scoring damage done in the opening half of play. And he can't get the roll that time. And he's one rebound shy of another double-double. Clemson hasn't needed him as much in the second half because the Tigers have shot it so well from beyond the arc. But in the first half, Thomas's contributions were huge. He was basically Clemson's offense in that first half and held it down in the paint. Had some great offensive rebounds and some good finishes inside. So an empty trip for Elijah Thomas. Not going to go that time. There's Thomas battling. He's got his double double. Tenth rebound, and now. That will go along with his 11 point days. Another one of those for Thomas on the season. Reed. The Tigers now just trying to work some clock. Hard foul inside. That'll do it for Thomas and Dante Grantham. A chance at a three point play. Clemson had a great job today of converting three point plays. Sometimes when you get inside and you get fouled like that, you only come out with a field with a free throw trip but Clemson did a great job of finishing in contact getting the two points and then finding an opportunity to add on a third with a free throw Brad Brownell thinking Scott Padgett would take the opportunity to gather these guys around and use the minute that you have when a player fouls out but the Bulldogs did not Grantham three-point play working on another fine afternoon the senior out of Martinsburg West Virginia he now has 18 points to tie his teammate Mitchell for game high honors. There's Chambers from way downtown. Not going to happen, but the rebound by Adams. Sharkey inside. He'll go to the line. So Dante Grantham off that double-double that he had Sunday against UMC Asheville. Where he scored 17 points. 18-point day. Here is Sharkey. And I guess they'll get Reed with the bump. Ticky-tack foul on the attack. Sharkey's finished with much more contact than that in this game and maybe hasn't been called for a foul. So interesting foul call there from the official. But Sharkey attacking the basket like he's done all game. Well, maybe fatigue is setting in for him, an 85% free throw shooter. He was the ninth best player in the state of Pennsylvania his senior in high school. And again, that's saying a lot. You've got those major metro areas and great basketball towns, but he comes up 0 for 2 on that trip to the line. Sanford applying pressure, doing anything they can to try to get back in this. Down over 20 with about two minutes to go, just trying to salvage the point differential here. And the Tigers, what do you know, will get close to 80 points yet again in the ball game. It's rare this season. They haven't been right around that number. Mitchell looking to get him there with a three try. No, but look at Gabe DeVoe. I'll tell you what, Dante Grantham and Gabe DeVoe, those guys have been the faces of the program coming into the campaign and all that, the two senior leaders. But each guy, in terms of stats, but also just in terms of vibe and, and hustle, have really been living up to that role. Feed for Grantham, and almost on cue. More from the Tigers' 6'8 senior. And he's got himself a 20-point game. Take it easy on the rim, Dante Grantham. Good grief. The answer that time by Coleman has had a nice afternoon in his second career game against the Tigers, and he has 17 points. Much bigger number than the three he scored when he was at Alabama a couple of years ago. So that Tigers starting five of Reed, Mitchell, DeVoe, Thomas, and Grantham, all in double figures, ranging from 11 to 20 points today. And Mitchell will have a chance to join Grantham with a 20-point afternoon as he'll head of the line. The Tiger. Just an incredible, incredible dunk from Dante Grantham. He's had a good amount of flushes today. Had a lot of points where his teammates have set him up, and he's finished with authority. And speaking of Grantham, you're going to see some line changes here for Clemson. So far in this game, the Clemson starters, all five of them, have combined for 76 of Clemson's 79 points. Now 19 for Mitchell, and each head coach emptying his bench. Sanford about to fall to 2-8 and eight on the season. That's 
well below what they expected outside the conference. But again, the fact that their starting centers only played two games and probably won't be back until Southern Conference play begins in early January, they hope, has not uh, helped their cause. And a 20-point game for Shelton Mitchell, and he'll be the last of the regulars to check out as Malik William comes on the floor. One of the good things in this November and December run for the Tigers is they've also gotten these young guys some quality minutes. Coleman, not that time. And so Amir Sims feeling a lot more comfortable. Clyde Trapp, he's a guy that will tell you he felt lost out there the first three games. He's played quality minutes. David Scarra becomes eligible next Saturday at Florida. We're down in Florida against the Gators as he will play in a Clemson uh, regular season game for the first time, the Valparaiso transfer. And he's a guy at 6'8 that will certainly add some quality depth. As A.J. Oliver with mom and dad sitting behind the Clemson bench can't get it to go. Malik Williams put back try no. Coleman though unable to save it. This Clemson team, we talked about how good those five starters have been. Scar is going to compete for a starting role. He might end up being that sixth man. But he's going to add just another dimension to this Clemson team, who's been very good so far. But adding Scar up, you think they can take even a need, another step forward, especially in that big game against Florida. And the Tigers just going to let the final seconds tick off. And a couple of guys who grew up along the Ohio River on either side of the state line. Scott Padgett of Stanford from Louisville. Brad Brownell of the Tigers, of course, from Evansville, Indiana. And they shake hands at midcourt. And I think Brad Brownell appreciates that Scott Padgett brought a quality team in here, undermanned at that, and gave his Tigers a ball game for the better part of the day. Hey, a guy who knows a lot about uh, getting some good games in the back pocket was watching today as well. Solid win for Clemson. All five starters and double figures keep building that momentum toward ACC play. Tigers improved to 8-1 and one on the season with the 81-59 victory over Sanford. On behalf of Kelly Gramlich and our crew, Pete Kennedy saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN.